Today we're going to be tying the Master Splinter. Now, this fly is a relatively simple mouse pattern that incorporates foam instead of spun deer hair. But don't let its simplicity fool you. This is actually one of the more effective mouse patterns out there and uh, is really good for targeting trout as well as bass. It's one of my personal favorites for you know late summer nights on lakes and ponds for throwing right at dusk, right after, um, you know, right at twilight to target bass especially. And, and so what we're going to be tying today from a color wise is the same type of color that I would be using. Uh, we're going to be using a black foam um, that you'll see here in just a minute. But let's start first with a hook. So we have a Gamagatsu B10S and this is a size 4. Uh, I happen to like this size of hook. I think it casts very well on a 5 weight rod. Um, and then you can also, if you want to use you know, a 6 or, or an 8 weight rod, uh, and cast even better. But I do like using slightly smaller for that reason. Uh, you can go even smaller, you can you tie size 6 or, or lower, and you can go much larger, you can tie size 1s, 1-0s, whatever you may want to do, and actually turn this from a mouse pattern to a rat pattern if you're so inclined. Um, so uh, for this, we're going to be tying with a, a stout, stouter thread, I should say. Uh, this is a um, UTC uh, 210 black. You um, feel free to use even stronger thread. You know, I would not go anything less than this when we're dealing with foam. We want to be able to really cinch it tight. But if you want to use a gel spawn or a Kevlar or, you know, a UTC 280, um, that would all be a great option because it's really going to allow you to cinch it down. Plus, as you see, we're actually going to be leveraging the thread diameter to give us a little bit of texture when we um, attach our foam. And so thicker thread works even better for that. For our tail and parts of our body, we're going to be using just a, uh, a zonker strip of a sort. Um, you know, so this is just kind of some, some grizzly and, um, you know, you can use squirrel or a rabbit, what, whatever, it really doesn't matter. What, what you need is you just need to make sure that you have this kind of, uh, strip for it. And then really the last piece of material that, that you're going to need is foam itself. So it's just a sheet of black craft foam. Uh, and you can see I've actually cut out, uh, from before when I made a different one out of it. Um, and as you can see, this isn't anything special. It's just, you know, craft store foam and uh, really inexpensive and, and a great way to get your foam for your different flies. I also have um, some kind of popsicle stick sized foam. Uh, this is also can be found at craft stores, really inexpensive. And this is great because you can see all the different colors that come with it. It just happens, I, there's not a black in here, so I got a, a separate sheet of black foam. But, um, but you can always use that for your foam options as well. And the last thing we're really going to need is uh, some super glue. And um, that's just uh, going to be used for securing that foam and really welding it in place. Okay, so as always, let's do our first step, and that's actually getting our thread on. Um, you know, so I start tying down, uh, get about halfway, and then I usually stop, trim my, uh, my excess. Um, I, I don't break it off. Some people do. But when you're tying with this thicker uh, thread, it's really hard just to snap it off, so just take a step, cut it. And I'm actually going to bring my thread all the way back. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, bring it oh, about halfway forward. And I'm going to spiral it, open spiral, to about there. And that open spiral, again, it's giving me texture because as I'm laying down these patterns, uh, or the materials, a lot of this material likes to spin. And so the more texture you give it, the, the more holding power you're going to have on your material. So we're going to lay down what's going to be our tail for our mouths. And uh, we're going to use our, you know, little zonker strip for it. And I like to, to be, um, you know, end about a you know, hook shank, hook and a half sh length uh, long. So we're going to measure two lengths, okay, um, of the hook shank, and that allows us uh, to to get one the length that we need when we go ahead and we cut it. Um, you could even do, you know, if you don't want to actually start tying all the way up up front and crowding the hook eye, you could actually do um, a hook and a half. Um, so I'm actually, you know what, I'm going to do that. I. I I'm going to do a hook and a half length, so it would be about that long. Um, so I'm going to cut it, but when I cut this, I want to, you see how I'm parting this hair? I don't want to trim the hair. 
I want to cut the hide only. And so now I've got it separated out, so I can come in and I can cut the tail. Now I'm going to lay that off to the side. I'm going to need it later. And I'm also going to come in here. And I'm folding all this hair back because, again, I don't want to cut the hair. I just want to cut the hide. I'm going to cut this into a little point. And you're going to lose some hair when you do this, but that's okay. We just don't want to cut all of it because now, see how it kind of hangs out over the end? That's what we want because that's going to be our little fluffy tail at the end. So that's going to really give us that, that two full hook shank lengths that we're looking for. Um, and now we're going to do where you see, okay, I've got just a little bit of, of uh, fluff at the end. The rest of this actually going to remove the hair. Um, it's a little bit hard to do. So you really got a hold of it and you can just pull it right off. So let me do this real quick. And again, I'm just kind of grabbing a tuft of hair and pulling right off and separating from the, uh, the rest of the strip. And so it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you can have some scraggly bits, as always. And I'm just going to leave those, those on there. If you really want to clean it, you can always go in with your scissors and trim down. Just make sure that you don't compromise the integrity of the tail. Because we want to um, we want to leave just that little little kind of fluffy bit at the end. Because um, I think it makes a, a kind of a neat looking tail. Okay, so when we go to tie this on, we're going to tie it up here. You can see my zonker strip has this weird like flaring up here. You find that at the end of them. So just trim that off. And now, uh, now I have something that's a little bit more manageable. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to tie it in just like this. But before we do, you notice how I... Remember we did those open spirals for that texture? I'm just going to add a little drop of super glue along that. Not a ton. Um, that's really going to help hold this in place. It's going to help prevent the tail from coming out and, more importantly, from it from spinning. So we're just going to kind of push that down, make sure it's on the top of our hook, make sure it's laying the direction we want. And then we're going to do our wraps. And like we do with, you know, bucktail and other stuff, we do a wrap down and we pull up rather than pulling down. When you pull down, you have a tendency to spin it. So we want to pull up instead. And uh, if you have to adjust it, just adjust it. So now I'm really going to secure in this, this front. I have some hair, so I'm just going to pull that back. That lays that material back. And uh, I'm just going to tie into kind of just around before the hook comes down, um, just a little bit past the hook point. I find on this B10S, so, so a lot of times on a hook, a lot of patterns will say, you know, lay your thread base onto the hook point. But the B10S is a, designed a little strange, where the, the hook shank remains flat, even going past that point. So if we only tied this zonker tail in up here, it'll have a tendency to want to come back over the hook point even more. Um, so by tying it back just a bit, it, it helps keep this tail farther back. Uh, so that's why I do that. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and open spiral again. I mean, all the way up to about here. Um, I could come all the way up, up front, but we're going to be laying on our, just manipulate my tail a little bit. There we go. Nice and straight back. Because um, we're going to be putting on our foam next. And so I don't want to crowd the, the hook eye with that foam material. I'm going to start just a little bit up and we're going to lay it back as you'll see. Now, I mean, I could use, uh, so we're going we're to cut, because um, we're not going to obviously wrap all this around our fly. It'll be a really fat mouse. Um, we want to cut uh, a strip, so let me explain how I uh, did this in the past so that you can see. So I used my hook gap as a guide. So you can see the hook gap. And so if I take my material and start at the, the hook point, 
I can see, okay, yeah, that's about the, uh, the width that I want. So I can always press in. Um, and you can see that. You may not be able to see that on camera, so I can also do it a different way. I can also, let me flip this around. I'll do it, uh, I'll do it underneath so you can see. Um, I could come in where now I have the edge up on my hook shank, come up to the hook point, and press down. Um, that you should be able to see. Uh, it works for me either way because I, I can see it, but we see that little dot. That tells us me my width. I know, okay, that's, that's the right width, and that's how I got that width. Now as far as the length that I want, I really want to be able to cover this hook shank, oh, let's say about three times. Uh, I'm not actually going to lay it down three times, but that gives me some extra room. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of eye that. So, oh, there's one, two, three. So I know I want to roughly get to somewhere around here. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I just mark that with my fingernail. And I know, I know my width. So come along. To about where I want to stop. And cut across. Um, if you're tying a bunch of these, you can actually just cut these into strips. Or if you're always tying the same hook size, uh, I vary. Um, you can just, you know, cut them into the strips and, and make that a lot easier. You're going to end up with something for a size four at, at around this width. Uh, and the next thing that I want to do is before I put it on, I'm going to do two things. First, like we did with our Zalker strip, we're going to cut a little tri a triangle. Um, that's going to help us to actually secure it in. So now, rather than trying to, to make wraps around here, which gets all bunchy, I can actually make wraps just around the tip. Um, but, but before I do that, just like we did here, I'm going to put down a little bead of super glue. So again, that thicker thread gives us texture. That gives us something really strong to have the glue bind against. And the whole point of this is try to prevent everything from spinning. Because you, you tie these mouse patterns, especially with the foam, and they have a tendency to want to spin around the hook shank. So we want to cement them in place. We want, want them to, to be welded to the hook shank in the orientation we're tying in. So what I'm going to do is put down my wrap and pulling up. We're always pulling up. You start pulling down too much and you'll spin it. So we're going to really put in the, a good front portion. And I got super glue down, so I want to make sure that i am got this oriented right. Press it down. Um, and really make sure that front is secured. But I'm not going to tie this tight all the way back. This prevents my uh, material from really pulling out. From here on, I'm going to do my open spiral. This gives me a little bit of body and, and uh, more importantly, buoyancy. Because I want this to float on top. And, uh, and the foam's going to do that for us. So I'm, I'm taking this back to just after that last wrap. And uh, these don't need to be even in between. So now I'm just after. All right, so we have our thread back here at the end of the fly. And before we uh, come back up and, and fold this piece over, we want to put in the body of the fly. And the body of the fly is going to be the same Zonker strip. Now, you can use different colors if you want. Um, I kind of like the, the grizzly. You know, I, I like the, the under fur of this one. It is a very good gray. I find that goes really well against the black. You can do straight black if you want. You can do all kinds of crazy colors. I've I tied one one time in like this weird um, mint green. And uh, we, we called it the, uh, I think it was the nuclear mouse. Um, <laughs> just because it uh, just looked like it was glowing. Um, so to tie this in, same thing we did before. Pluck a little bit off. But we're not going to pluck all of it. I just want enough that I can actually tie down against it. Um, and uh, for this one, I just like trimming. See that? I just like doing that because it gives me a better tie-in point. And so I'm going to tie this in right about here, right at that end point. 
a couple of really good wraps. And now I'll advance my thread forward. Kind of open spiral, a little bit tight, two, three good wraps up here in the front. And I'm going to advance my thread all the way up to just in front of that bump. This is really going to be where the body of our fly is. And so we're going to palmer our wraps. Um, so I'm going to, you know, do this as if I didn't have a rotary. I'll show you an advantage of a, a rotary vice here in just a minute. So I'm going to, I'm going to go around and you'll notice, see that? I'm just overlapping the one before it. So I'll show you again. And I'm pulling the hair back, just over wrap, overlapping. Um, pull it back and just overlap. Now I'll show you for this last wrap of how I do this when I'm using a rotary. You know, I just spin it and just kind of work it around. And uh, that works really well to put a nice even layer on, especially if you're doing hackle. Uh, that makes it really easy. Okay, so we're just going to bring this kind of straight up vertical because I'm at the point where I wanted to be where I stop my thread. And I'm just going to bring my thread over top a little loosely, bring it down slightly, and I'm going to do it again. Just kind of throw. Helps if you don't catch it in the zonker strip. Um, throw it over top loosely. And uh, then I'm going to put one or two wraps just in front. I know my material is relatively trapped. Um, so that's going to allow me to get rid of some of this excess. So I'm just going to come in, careful where I cut. I can put that off to the side. Now I can take all my hair, pull it back, and that exposes what I actually want to tie with. You know, and that's the hide itself. There we go. Now it's tied in. And that's secure, that's not going anywhere. So we're gonna be folding this back over, but to make this fly a little bit less crazy, and to give us all of our fluff down below, because that's where we want it. We're going to part the hair. See that? Now, if this gets real crazy and it's too hard to work with, wet your fingers. And then, do that, only wet the other side. See how much better that is to work with? So, when you're dealing with really like, you know, schloppen or, or zonker strip or anything like that that gets a little un, unruly, wet it. And it'll really help lay it down better. So we've parted it. Now we're going to bring this over top. And we've got our thread. I don't know if you noticed. We have our thread right behind the hook eye. And that's actually where we, we'd ended after tying in. And that's right where we want it. So now what we can do is we're going to do... And notice what I'm doing here. When I went over top, it came down. I'm pulling gently but firmly. And I pulled that in about a half way. And I'm going to put another wrap around and pull gently but firmly. And I'm going to do it a third time. And I'm just bring it over one more time. Now that seems real secure. You know, if you have Kevlar, you can just absolutely crank it. But when you're using real strong thread and you need it because of the tension you got to put in, you can cut right through the foam. So by doing that in successive wraps, I prevent myself from cutting that foam real easily. So the last part about this is we want to make the head. Um, so we're going to end up folding it back. But uh, there's a couple different options here. The, the easiest one is advance your thread back to here and just kind of hold it there. Don't, don't really cinch it down too hard, just a little. And then you would fold this back and wrap right over top. Um, and that that's very simple and, and that's great and you would trim it just as you'll see here in a minute. Or um, you can do what I'm about to do if you have some fun colored foam. Speaking of squirrels, you may have heard my dog in the background. I think she was chasing one. Um, I'm going to pull out some red. So I'm just cut off uh, this end and then I only want a thin strip so I can just kind of cut that strip down 
this is neat. Because if I put this across and then fold over, it's going to give us eyes when we trim it. And that's kind of cool. So same thing that we were doing before. Same place. I didn't, I didn't move my thread from before. I'm pulling down. I don't want to pull this too hard. Just a bit. So you can see I've just pulled a little bit. You know, I haven't really cranked on it. Now I'm going to do one more wrap to bring it down. So now it's kind of secured and in place. Um, this last part, I'm going to wet this fur again just to get it out of my way. Is I'm going to whip finish. But I want this all to be um, cemented in place. You know, I want, it, I want it welded in place. So to do that, I'm going to take my super glue and run a bead of super glue up just a bit on my thread. And that, when I put the tension in, is really going to wrap it in place. So before I whip finish, I'm going to take it now that it has the speed of super glue. And that's why I moved all my fur back. I don't want to get my fur with a bunch of glue on it. And wrap it around. And one more wrap on top. So now I actually could just cut this thread. I wouldn't even need a whip finish. But I'm going to whip finish anyway. So as always, pull the thread back, whip down, thread right up, and I pull it just across makes this little triangle, give myself more room, lay my triangle across, and there's one, two, three. I like to do four just in case. Turn away from me, pull the back end out, pull in the thread, get the thread out of the hook, pull it tight. And now that's tied off. All right, you just saw me finish the whip finish. Um, yeah, the only part that you missed is actually cut the thread. And I've, uh, I've actually trimmed this fly. I can show you what I did uh, when I trimmed it. So all I did here is, um, you know, I just trimmed kind of flush, trimmed kind of flush. And then I put, um, just my preference, you know, I came about halfway back on the body, trimmed it, and then made little ears. Um, you actually didn't need to do any of that. If you put the eyes in, uh, just trim the eyes just so they're not real long and, you know, it, provided that you only did the three lengths of the body, it would be uh, the perfect length for you uh, when you finish. This is how I like to, to finish it. And so this is, uh, this is the final, final pattern. Again, simple mouse pattern, but very effective. Easy um, in the size four to cast from a number of different weight rods. I've gone all the way down to a, uh, a four weight to, to cast this fly with, with good success. Um, and it would be easy to cast from a five weight or, uh, or an eight weight. 